is town council tuesday july the 4th 2017 9 a.m in council chambers um we do we have an introduction of late items no so could we please have a motion to um that the agenda be adopted thank you councillor uh, Rhodes, councillor king all in favor thank you um we have two delegations this morning, and our first delegation is uh, the Asuyas Minor Ball Association with a presentation of the president of this group, um, Dr. Barsh. Would you like to come up to the microphone, please? Sure. Welcome. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Oh, there we go. Perfect. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank you for your time this morning, uh, councillors, Mayor McCordoff. Thank you for uh, for entertaining our delegation. Um, I brought with me today um, some of the future baseball stars of Osuyas, and uh, they're here to support um, our request and the, and the submission that I'm sure that uh, that you've all been made aware of uh, pertaining to the letter that we submitted to Mayor and Council. Um, what I'd like to do is I'd like to kind of start and I'm going to walk back and forth to my computer here so please forgive me a little bit but uh, um, I'd like to start with talking a little bit about the the state of baseball in Osuyas. Test. Jason, you can try using this. It cuts out there are some other chairs just yeah. around the corner there if you we could maybe bring some in and okay. all right so um, starting with the the state of baseball in Osuyas, currently our our baseball family in Osuyas consists of uh, a variety of, of mixed user groups um, our softball user groups include the the adult um, co-ed um, slow pitch group and the seniors mixed slow pitch group. And actually, you know, before I get started, and our seniors mixed slow pitch group. Um, there wasn't any. F um, formal minor baseball until 2015, although there was a minor baseball society uh, years back um, that sort of ceased to operate. Uh, I don't know exactly what uh, what the year was that they ceased operations, but we resur resurrected minor baseball in, in 2016 formally with the, the foundation of the Asuyas Minor Baseball Association. This year, our association consisted of uh, a T-ball, which is a seven and under group, a tadpole nine and under, mosquito eleven and under, and a peewee group, which is uh, for twelve and thirteen year olds. Um, these uh, photographs here on the screen are our uh, our tadpole and T-wee or T-ball group, and then our, our mosquito and our peewees. Um, our peewee group this year uh, participated in a valley wide. Um, uh, competitions on a number of levels. They finished second in a in a West Kelowna tournament, only to a, a sort of a stacked Coquitlam team. They performed very very well, and in our South Zone uh, regional playoffs, uh, they finished with a, um, a bronze medal. You can ask the coaches and the players probably disappointed that they did finish with a bronze and they were hoping for gold. But some, sometimes in baseball, that's just how it worked out. So we're very very proud of all of our kids' achievements this year. Um, certainly at the higher age groups, and that's a testament to us having organized baseball in Osuyas for the last past three years and just see the progression of these kids getting better. So we're very, very proud of what we've been able to put together in the last three years. All the groups of kids um, that have come together, the volunteers, the parents, um, the fans, and, uh, and, and, uh, and our umpires, um, too, at the same time as cultivating a group of baseball players, we're also cultivating a group of umpires to make this all happen. So what does the future of minor baseball in Osuyas look like? Well, a couple of smiling faces on there will tell you that we want to very much grow our grassroots program. We don't see ourselves as a double-A or a potential triple-A baseball program, but what we do see ourselves is as a grassroots program, a, a program that's going to serve as a kickoff to a lot of bigger and more advanced baseball. We would like to expand into the upper ages um, with, uh, with an expansion into the, the Bantam age group for 15, 14, and 15-year-olds as of next year. 
We're going to start to market heavily to the community of Oliver. That's something that we haven't touched yet. With just under 100 uh, registrants uh, in minor baseball this year, only just a handful from Oliver, but we feel that um, if we heavily market towards the, the community of Oliver, that that number will, will jump significantly. And as such, we hope to double our registrations by the year to, to uh, 2020, which would push, push us up to close to 200 kids. And like I said, our program, we're sort of gearing our program. We understand what we've got in terms of uh, logistical challenges, both from a facilities perspective and from a, just from a, a scope and size perspective. But we see ourselves as a step off or a jump, jump into program for AA and AAA baseball and beyond. We also see ourselves expanding into a summer program. So a lot of baseball goes from uh, a spring season into a summer season, the summer season being that, that one step uh, higher in terms of its competition over the spring season. And we see ourselves down the road um, offering and participating in, in summer leagues. And the big one here for our community and for the town and for uh, a lot of the local residents and businesses is the ability to provide um, spring tournaments here in Osuyas. So from the community's perspective, tournaments are really obviously for us to be able to pull off and run a tournament um, that would be uh, uh, three or four of these tournaments would be typically 18 tournaments um, in the months of uh, April, May, and June. Um, rough calculations can kind of put that at about a thousand room nights, um, which are obviously going to heavily impact uh, the hotels or restaurants, wineries, retail. Um, certainly it's going to add to um, the bottom line with respect to hotel tax revenue. There's a variety of things that we've been involved with um, in this community and one of the things that we've always sort of prided ourselves on is trying to strengthen our shoulder seasons and as a result I think that in Osuyas and the South Okanagan in particular our shoulder seasons are getting broader and broader which I think is fantastic but being able to offer first rate or first quality or first first class uh, top caliber uh, baseball tournaments in Osuyas is something that I think that could potentially be a huge win for us potentially being an ideal host site for for minor baseball tournaments with the growth of our young family demographic that's occurring in town right now, and first off, I can say that the, the numbers of calls that we're getting from family um, new patients at our office is unprecedented. Um, so I can say firsthand that something that is growing in our community is a young family demographic, and I feel that this is something that we need to support. Um, and being able to offer additional programs to kids that aren't involved in um, soccer or aren't involved in other sports and activities in town, baseball is a perfect fit. Baseball is one of three programs in our, in our area or in our region that offers organized and competitive sports, um, only two of which are local. The third one is a, is a soccer outfit out of Penticton that is running minor soccer for our community. Um, but other than minor hockey, minor baseball is the, is the second largest uh, organized competitive local sports association. Finally, and probably most importantly, is that baseball is getting kids outside. It's getting kids that aren't participating in other sports, that kids that normally would be spending some more time on their screens and devices, and get, getting them outside. I've got some, a couple of anecdotal stories I'll share with you at the end, but um, part of the passion about baseball is it's one of those games that you don't have to be a super athlete to play. It just means getting outside, throwing the baseball, swinging the bat, and having some fun with your teammates. And it's something that I remember growing up as one of my very, very fondest memories is organized baseball. So some of our short-term needs as an association, our immediate short-term needs are going to be include a pitching mound for our peewee group, which is a 13, uh, 12 and 13 year olds, along with a baseball infield, storage facilities for field equipment and team equipment. <coughs> Looking into the future, which is what we do when we're trying to sort of set ourselves uh, on an appropriate course over the next few years, there's a few things here that we see um, coming down the line, but we're setting ourselves up for now that could potentially serve us in the future is a baseball field for our Bantams. As we progress into the Bantam, we've already had our, our graduating PBs have already almost put together their own Bantam team for next year because they had such a great time this year, but our graduating players want to continue playing the game of baseball. Um, so somewhere down the line, whether that's the next couple of years or even longer, looking for a field for them to play on. 
looking for covered and protected dugouts, um, both from a safety perspective, but up on the West Bench in the afternoon on a Saturday, it gets incredibly hot. And uh, just for uh, just for some shade and, and keeping the keeping the kids safe, uh, a permanent field for our for our 11 and under mosquito uh, age kids, a batting cage facility, field concession, and then so all the way down the line to to, to some of the other uh, requests that we would have would things like lights for for both of the the upper age fields. So going from our long term needs into our, and, and recognizing our short-term needs, we need to evaluate what our current town assets are. So how can we accomplish what we need to accomplish, but we do it responsibly and within what we have available to us? One of our current town assets that we have used and we do use is the desert park. So that is a multi, of course, as you're aware, a multi-use facility that caters to um, uh, grass infields, um, soccer, soccer users, um, uh, the horse track, exhibition grounds, all those sorts of things as a multi-use facility. Our West Bench field, uh, although this is an old photograph, the, the field has been, has been shaled for, uh, for slow pitch baseball and, and, uh, and softball. And then the third uh, current town asset is the West Bench dog park, which is just adjacent to the uh, West Bench softball field. So some of the solutions that we as a group have um, put together, we wanted to come to council not with another list of problems. I know you have probably enough of those. Um, what we want to bring as well to you guys is some solutions. So I don't want to stand up here and say that our solutions are the only solutions, but we have wrapped our heads around a few things and hopefully make your, your decision making that much easier. Um, one of the solutions would be to convert the existing uh, softball field into a minor baseball field. Another scenario would be to re repurpose the, the West Bench Dog Park, um, which is originally used as a baseball field. And the third scenario would be to develop the Desert Park as a, as a dedicated baseball park. So looking at the various scenarios, upgrading the existing West Bench field would probably be the least expensive of all the options because all we would need to do is basically add a pitching mound change the, the infield surface uh, from uh, shale and to turf and then provide access, um, provide us access to the existing short storage shed up there that is currently being used by the senior mix slow pitch uh, group. However, um, doing that would be very unpopular with the current user groups, obviously due to the presence of the pitching mound and the change to their playing surface. So impacting the, the, the existing user group were, would potentially be a, a significant problem to this scenario. Our second scenario would be to um, repurpose the West Bench Dog Park. Um, doing that would accomplish all of our short-term goals and the potential for several long-term goals, as I've outlined. Um, however, as a dog owner and a dog user and seeing the, the number of people that use that facility, I feel and our group feels that relocating the dog park would be necessary uh, as opposed to abolishing it. We see that as a very valuable community asset and I've got some thoughts on that I'll share with you in a minute. There are some limitations, however, for our 15 and under uh, age groups in its current form as the field would be, would be prohibitive and would be actually too small for, for those kids. But there is a tremendous potential with that and, the, and the, the slow pitch or the softball field adjacent to it and the access, obviously, to parking um, and the, 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 the dedicated use that is already there. Um, there's a tremendous potential for a very comprehensive baseball complex uh, at that facility. Finally, our third scenario would be a desert park redevelopment or development. Um, one thing that this would cause would, would limit the, the user groups that could use that facility in, in making it dedicated for baseball. Would likely be the most expensive option and would require extensive development. Um, changing, changing all of that grass on the inside to a bona fide baseball park or parks would, would certainly um, require the most development in this case. So. Comparing the, the, the various scenarios, um, looking at one, two, and three, obviously increasing in cost as we go from upgrading the West Bench Park um, right all the way up to the Desert Park development as the most expensive scenario. Each one would, would accomplish the short-term objectives that I've outlined. Um, 
Long-term objectives, upgrading the West Bench field would only be able to accomplish some of them, not all of them. Uh, repurposing the dog park and the desert park development would accomplish all of our long-term objectives. Now, user groups, um, of course, the um, senior slow pitch and the adult slow pitch would be affected by changing their, their playing surface and the soccer folks and some of the exhibitions that are occurring out at Desert Park would be affected, so I've made those as, or we've included those as sort of a negative. Um, the user groups um, with repurposing the dog um, dog park would, would be unaffected. Obviously, the dog walkers would be, but again, I have a solution for you. And then the community, um, gaining an asset uh, in respect to a dedicated baseball park with minimum impact on the, on the uh, existing users. So what we felt was probably the scenario to, for us to consider, to look at, and what we're asking you is to consider is the, the second scenario, and that would be to repurpose the, the West Bench Stonk Park as a dedicated minor baseball field. As I said, it's a minimal effect on any of the other sports user groups. Um, the dogs and the dog uh, residents would need, to, would need to find another home, accomplish our short-term and long-term goals, Tremendous future potential as a baseball complex uh, would be maximized. The intended use of the town assets that was at one point built as a baseball park would continue to be a baseball park. Reasonable costs. Most of the infrastructure that's necessary is already there. Um, um, I'll outline that in a minute. And the creation of a new community asset, both in a minor baseball field and uh, potentially a relocated off-leash facility. So this is what our West Bench Baseball Complex could look like. Um, light's a little bit tough in here, but we can see there that the, the field on the right uh, I've outlined in blue, and then the field on the left I've overlaid what a, what a, what a Bantam baseball field, uh, properly dimensioned baseball field would look like. And the blue line around there is basically a mirror of the slow pitch field. So the yellow line is the existing fence. And it sort of shows you that, that ex the, the existing ballpark is smaller than the, than the slow pitch field that is up there. Phase one would be to create the playing surface for a minor baseball, uh, minor baseball field. Would be to include field or, uh, and slash change room facilities um, that would be suitable for that field. Uh, obviously improving some, some of the entry signage and that for, uh, for minor baseball. Phase two would potentially be the field extension, the extension of the out, outfield fence, uh, and, and to include the, the area formerly known as the BMX track there, um, with some bleacher areas for, for spectators. Phase three could look, um, could look like covered dugouts, uh, concession slash washroom area, and, and or batting cage. So diagrammatically speaking, phase one, there's our existing fence, we would be comfortable using that as of right now for our peer ages, um, but as we progress into the higher age, gra uh, age groups, we would need to expand that, but we're using the existing fence. The baseball field would need to be created. There's the existing sh storage shed that was not shown on the, the aerial photo um, that the slow pitch users do have, so we, um, uh, we would request a similar sort of facility in, in, the, in the right field. Um, uh, area where we could access field equipment um, and potentially all of the gear that we need to dress the, the baseball field for games. Phase two would look like extending the outfield fence to include the area that I've diagrammed here on the overlay. Some bleacher areas on um, both the, the home and visiting sides of the baseball field for spectators. <laughs> Phase three would include uh, up upgraded dugout a potential for concession washrooms to facilitate tournaments, tournament play, and then subsequently a caged area where um, kids could practice their batting and pitching skills um, without the fear of, uh, of, of injury to spectators or themselves. Okay, that's all fine, Danny, but what about the dogs? Okay, because I know we're going to get that question. No problem. We also come to you with some more solutions. One solution um, that we've kind of been wrapping our heads around and knowing the community the way that we do, one solution would be Kingsman Park. A second solution could potentially be Desert Park. There are more solutions. There's lands adjacent to the Desert Park that could be developed. There's other town assets that could be 
I don't want to stand here and be the guy that has to feel like I'm compelled to, to develop uh, the off-leash facility for the town of Vesuvius. What I'm here to ask you for is a dedicated baseball park. But in doing that, I realize that we're going to face some hardships with some of our existing town infrastructure. So I want to provide one solution that I feel could be looked at. Um, certainly, again, not the only solution, but another one that could be looked at. And then more importantly, perhaps in the context of what I'm referencing, another solution may actually be um, fostered. So why, why we felt that a, that a Kinsman Park solution could, could, could work well is that A1 is centrally located, probably one of the biggest, biggest pluses. Um, I know that, that the original off-leash dog park committee did um, bring up this as a potential solution initially, so that is, that is uh, also a, a positive. There's existing town services on site, including washrooms, playgrounds, there's shaded areas, there's trees, gazebos are there. Um, it's already totally, uh, totally fenced and enclosed, and all we would really be losing in the process is a very underutilized uh, mini soccer field. So, as I said, at this site, of course, we've got terrific parking, washrooms, playground areas, shaded areas, picnic areas, and all that really we would need to convert this into a very, very um, top-rate um, multi-use. Uh, off-leash facility would be to create a new fence and somewhere in that location that would provide us with an area for off-leash dogs, mixed large small dogs, however somebody could concoct a, an appropriate layout um, that could include uh, agility equipment with all of the appropriate infrastructure in place. Some of the huge, po uh, some of the huge benefits that I see um, with this solution could be certainly that it's centrally located. It's going to reduce car trips. People will actually be able to walk to the dog park more often instead of having to drive. Every Tuesday and Wednesday night I'm up at the West Bench Field and every single night that I've been up there I only see people driving up there. Now I understand that there probably are some people that do walk there, but locating it in more central in proximity to a lot more residents in town is going to leave cars at home. It's going to increase sidewalk pedestrian traffic for our businesses. It's going to create much more socializing along that sidewalk for, for dog walkers to and fro and even non-dog walkers. Um, I, what I really like about this is the fact that it's a social, it's a social solution. So it's creating a now a mixed use space, a space where families, not just mom and dad going to walk the dog or grandma and grandpa going to walk the dog, but now maybe they can take their kids to the playground at the same time. Um, what it does, it creates a more of a social, social type of hub rather than just an off-leash destination. Obviously, it's going to be accessible to visitors. It's visible. It's right there. A lot of our visitors are even unaware that there is an off-leash facility here in, in Osuyas. Um, the services and amenities are already there. Um, f for water, for washrooms, um, all of the things that would be necessary. Power, of course. Our only loss is really an underutilized field. Very, very rarely do I ever even see people on that, and I drive by that field probably six times a day. Um, very cost effective, there's very little infrastructure that would be potentially necessary at least to get going. It could be developed into whatever, whatever, uh, whatever vision uh, the committee um, were to deem necessary. Um, what I think more importantly is that it's a, it becomes now a family health facility. It becomes an area where everybody can go and meet and, and socialize. Um, an area where uh, you can walk and get an ice cream on the way or the way home and, and it creates a very interactive um, and I think that the, the site usage there is, could be incredibly powerful for our community. Is, so I don't want to see that uh, the fact that we're asking for a baseball park to be a negative is a matter of fact. I see that some, developing something like this could be a tremendous positive for our community at the same time. I'm all about finding win-win solutions and here what we're doing is we're trying to trying to find a solution that could be um, exactly what the off-leash people would be looking for while at the same time trying to find a permanent home for our baseball players. So to summarize, benefits. Town of Osuyas, obviously there'd be some huge economic benefits for us being able to host um, high caliber tournaments. Um, there's going to be uh, economic benefits, there's going to be social benefits, there's going to be um, obviously benefits for um, being able to, to use these facilities to, to their peak potential. 
minor baseball, of course, we're going we're gonna to have a proper facility. One of the knocks that we had um, in our initial year was the facilities, and we had comments from Penticton and West Kelowna that the higher level baseball teams, uh, the Peewees and the Bantams and certainly the Midgets, would not come to play in Osuya simply because we're playing off of portable pitching mounds. Um, we're playing off of, uh, in a lot of cases, all grass fields with short backstops where stealing, it, which, is a, which is a valued part of the game of baseball, is not possible or is, 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 not, is not possible because of the position of the backstops. It's just quite simply that the facilities for minor baseball are not here. And to this point, um, because we became very frustrated with the fact that our facilities wouldn't uh, attract a lot of these teams to come down, this year we decided that we would host a lot of these events in Oliver. Um, and that's something that I'm very passionate about our community. And I think our community deserves better. Our community needs a dedicated home for minor baseball. Can Oliver sure be used? Absolutely. Um, but I don't want to call ourselves the serious minor baseball facility operating out of Oliver. I'm proud to be the Asunius Minor Baseball Facility. I'm proud to be a member of this community, and I do feel that this turn, that that these kids, that that uh, that these families, and that these these um, um, th this growing demographic does need and does deserve uh, a dedicated baseball facility. So a lot of the other user groups, um, soccer, slow pitch, based on all of this, would be relatively unaffected. Um, what would the residents gain? Well, they would, they'd gain a, a better dog park, quite frankly, um, in my opinion. Uh, one that's social, the one that's interactive, that's community focused, certainly centrally located. Um, the dogs are going to get a chance to make even more friends. And our community's kids, this is the big one for me. Um, more active, um, social, emotional health. The one thing about baseball, and I, I totally wanted to share you a story, one of the reasons why I love baseball. Um, through all of this process, I got a chance to umpire. Uh, a couple years ago, I took to umpiring, and I've been doing a lot of umpiring up and down the valley, even helping Penticton when they were stuck with, with umpires. And I got a, a chance to do the final game this year for our, for our peewees, or, although our peewees weren't playing in it. The coach from Summerland, uh, Terry Rolson, came up to me and he said, he said, he said, Blue, he said, uh, just so you're aware, I have a, a child on my team who's extreme autistic. And I said, okay. He said, if need be, if we have to pull him from the game, what are the ramifications? And we walked him through what potentials for pulling a kid mid-game would be. And I said, just out of curiosity, what could happen? He says as his mood will elevate as intensity elevates, and he could become uncontrollable. And, uh, you know, and he has been known to swing bats, and he hasn't been known to, to get dangerous. And I said, okay, well, that's great. Hello, uh, it's a good game going back and forth. Um, we get into about the sixth inning. He comes to me and he says, he says, just so you know, things are, are going up. I said, okay. And I knew what that meant. We all knew what he meant. And I told the other coach, I said, just, just so you know, this is what's happening. The game is close. We get into the seventh inning, and the Penticton team, which is, obvi which is the, the away team in this game, gets up and they score a couple of runs. Now the Summerland team is down two. Um, down two. And uh, so at any rate, um, they get the outs. Penticton's leading. And with two out in the bottom of the seventh, down one run now, bases loaded, this kid comes to the plate. When you know that the kid gets a base hit, scores two runs, his team wins. He's crying. We're crying. That's what baseball does. That's the thought I'd like to leave you with today, is that there's something special about the game of baseball, and that everybody and anybody can be a hero. Thank you for your time today. <laughs> yeah, hang on. Thank you very much, Jason. Um, you've given us uh, a great deal to, to look at here, and thank you for organizing it so well. And and providing many of the options that we would obviously be having to look at. So it would be our town staff that would be continue to look at this. Um, we do appreciate you uh, coming forward with uh, positive solutions to all of this. 
And I'm sure that uh, that council has several questions, as do I, but I'll let, uh, I'll let Councillor Campbell start. Thank, sure, thank you. Thank you, Mayor McCordoff. <coughs> well, congratulations, uh, Jason. It's the first time we've brought our gallery to tears when it doesn't involve taxes. <laughs> <laughs> and guys, you've been incredibly patient, so, so good on you. Um, there's no secret to where I, where I stand as far as um, kids and sports in our community and, and creating opportunities. Um, but I'm thankful, I guess, that you did this exercise in the form of a, a root cause analysis um, because the challenge we face as a council, no matter how passionately we feel about things like this, is that we have to balance our community needs, uh, which is always a challenge. So uh, I wanted to thank you for taking the approach you, you've taken with this, looking at what the potential ramifications or challenges to some of the solutions um, that you've put forth. and. Um, yeah, thank you for that. Yeah, and like I say, I, a lot of the things that I was talking about today were not intended to be the only road. It was just to sort of show that there are, I think, some win-win win-win solutions out there. It helps us. Thank you. Councillor Rhodes. You almost brought me to tears. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you should have been there, CJ. Yeah. <laughs> um, I love your passion. I love uh, your presentation. It was very thorough and uh, having identifying uh, some of the solutions is is such a great thing how great to have all these uh, young members of our community out here to see this process and how we get from where we are and you know to to achieving our goals and that type of thing um, with all due respect I'd like to talk about the dog park a little bit and I know you uh, have intimate knowledge about how we got to where we are with that um, that field up there sat vacant for a number of years. I'm not going to fill in the blanks because I don't know how long it sat there. There were some reasons why it sat empty uh, for all of those years. And uh, uh, along came Jody Hoffman with a long, long list of residents that wished to establish uh, an off-leash uh, dog park in our community. and. The council of the day, and myself included, jumped on that uh, very passionately. Not quite to the same level as you did today, but certainly there was a lot of passion. And dog owners are a compelling group of people in our community. And our job, you know, includes providing amenities for groups like that in our community. So we moved forward with it. We didn't really repurpose that area up there because it had overgrown. There was no uh, real uh, baseball of any kind, slow pitch, uh, other than the backstop and that kind of thing. So it was the perfect location at the time. Since that time, we've invested uh, uh, a fair amount of uh, tax dollars in there to put some structures up there to improve the field. And it certainly is a big part of our planning in the, in the future. Um, I can't quite remember how many people were on that list, uh, uh, you know, uh, many, maybe 100, 200. You would probably know the exact numbers that were on there. And each and every one of them put a lot of thought into, you know, where they wanted to have it and why they wanted to have it up there. Um, so all of those words are leading up to a question. How is this council of this day going to deal with that passion for that place up there. I know you've provided an alternative, but really uh, so many of those users up there like that. You know, there's compelling arguments to have it up there. I know you've addressed an awful lot of them, but at the end of the day, if the message goes out that we're repurposing that, you know that there will be tremendous pushback towards this council about that. and. So I would appreciate some of your advice and your thoughts on that. And I get the I have the the uh, the fortune of working with Jody um, mm -hmm. uh, on a very regular basis. So we've we've had some discussions, and 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 um, I won't I won't speak for her. Um, and as a matter of fact, I believe if you look back on that list, we're on that list too. Um, because we had two um, boxers that we lost a few years ago, and we have two Boston Terriers now, and we are dog park users, off the the off leash park. Um, I'm 
again, our group is not against the dog park, and I want that, and uh, I want that to be known that um, th that's not what we're here for. We're here to try and find an economical, a make sense approach to finding a baseball facility for our kids. Now, what I think we've provided is that is an area that would uh, minimize tax outlay that would um, um, provide a suitable solution that would allow us to put a, together a, uh, an appropriate baseball product because right now um, because we're in infancy our volunteer base is strong and I want to keep that momentum moving forward in the right direction and in order to do that we need a place that we can call home in terms of both playing there but uh, a, a facility that will allow us now to take baseball to where it can be in our community. Um, with regards to the, some of the, the pushback that you'll get, you'll get pushback for change, just for change's sake, right? And you guys will know that is better, better than any of us. Um, but the change that I see that could occur here could be a potentially huge for those residents. The only ones that really could have a, a challenge with this are the ones that do walk there from the golf course properties. Everyone else drives there. And whether they drive there or they drive to town, I mean, that's not going to change. But what's going to change is that people that live in town that do drive there don't have to now. They could walk there. Um, but the facility itself could be that much more than what it is right now. Um, and like I say, we use it. We know that there's a gazebo. We know that you guys have spent some money on the gazebo. We're told that the gazebo could be relocated, um, with the exception of the concrete pad. Uh, we know some, some of our sponsors are in the concrete business and you'll probably help us with that. Um, but at the end of the day, I think that what the message could be or, or should be is that we're not kicking you out of your home. We're trying to find you a better one, one that could be, you know, used uh, <coughs> with the entire family, one that could, could include all of the things that you would love to have up at that site that you don't are already available at other sites within the town. And that's just one solution, and I'm sure there's others, right? I, I wish I had that answer, other than I think what we can do is give you a better park. Thank you. Councillor King. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, great pre presentation, Dr. Barch, and it's nice to see all the kids here in the audience for sure, and nice for some to come with some solutions, uh, whether they're right or wrong. I have two questions. Is there a minor baseball association in Oliver? No. Okay, well, that's great. And number two, if we were to support your thoughts, would you see your association trying to uh, raise some funds to help offset the cost? Absolutely. And I, and I, I want to make that point clear is that we're not actually coming here for money today. Um, we may down the road. Everybody's in the end. <laughs> but we're not today. Um, and I really, truly do feel that... Um, that with our ability to generate funds in the community, with our ability to, to raise um, sponsorship, um, I think that this would really be a very, very minimal outlay on behalf of the town, if, if anything at all. You know, being able to provide some shovels and some things like that, but I think other than that, I, I don't see a lot um, happening, certainly in the foreseeable future. Um, um, and to answer your question about Oliver, they have a recreational program that is uh, sort of an after-school program, and it's just pick up baseball. So it's not an organized, um, you know, game scenario. We do play with play them, um, but uh, the kids will be the first ones to tell you that it's there's a difference between recreational and and competitive baseball. Thank you. So, Jason, you, oh, sorry, Carol, I'll get you in just a sec. You said that you have played this year out of Oliver. If Oliver doesn't have this set up the same way you do, wh how is it that they have all these fields that work better than here? Do they create Great question. Part? Yeah. They, they've got five baseball fields. And, and they are used or just on a sort of an ad hoc after school basis? With minor baseball. Yeah. Their slow pitch, uh, their slow pitch user group is probably. 
the same, uh, maybe a little bit more in terms of user group, in terms of user base. Well, what they do is they host a couple of really big tournaments every year, um, and that fills up their fields. Um, I know for certain the Mother's Day and Father's Day weekends, they fill those fields. Um, but truthfully, their fields, I, f I also feel that their, that their five baseball fields um, could, be better, could be better suited to, towards that. Part of, part of our master plan moving forward is to, if we go to double what, I, what we are now, because we really haven't even approached Oliver. Um, if we grow to that, I see our association working very similar uh, to minor hockey in that kids will practice here, kids will practice there, and then they switch. So That's April, May, and June are mm -hmm. the months that you play baseball. Mm -hmm. You don't do it in the summer. It's too hot. Is that the reason? No, not right now. Uh, summer baseball is, is that step above spring baseball. Spring okay. baseball is sort of the entry-level competitive baseball. Summer baseball is more competitive, sort of like a rep if you will, like equivalent of rep hockey. So I've been here long enough that I've seen baseball come and go and, um, and soccer and, you know, my kids used to play it as well. Mm -hmm. I guess um, one of the concerns that I have is in you're involved with, uh, with uh, minor hockey, it seemed to be the same group of parents and kids that get their kids involved in everything. Mm -hmm. And as a teacher, I always wanted to try and encourage you know, more participation. Mm -hmm. it, does the cost for this or the travel time or um, does that stop some kids or are you just, it doesn't matter what uh, sport you have. You, I bet you have the same group of kids and parents in all activities just because they're keeners and I'm all for getting kids outside and I'd yeah. like to encourage more. And the, the, like I was saying before, the interesting thing about baseball is that we see kids that we don't see at hockey, that okay. we don't see at soccer. Okay. Um, and baseball is kind of unique that way because baseball is a hurry up and wait kind of game. You know, fast explosive movements and then mm -hmm. strategy explosive movements and strategy and that appeals to a wider range of, of, of child than say a hockey type of environment or even a soccer type of environment. And the cost is obviously less than ba than uh, hockey I would think. For sure, okay. yeah. I mean as you so go up of course it's the travel yeah. with anything else. Mom and dad going to Kelowna and beyond you know that's when costs start to get out of control but at this point we have so much baseball in our valley you know between here between us and the summerland south we've got seven i'll say seven different teams that we could play at each age group okay so there's a lot of hockey the other thing that was that you mentioned that there were different mounds uh, yeah. i think they're placed differently for different age groups yes is that are you able to accommodate both of those different on the same field if Def you needed to? Definitely. Okay. okay. Yeah. I just wasn't sure. Yeah. Sorry. Councillor Youngberg, did you have a question? Yes. Yeah. I do. Okay. Thanks. Great presentation, Jason. Thank you, Councillor. And, of course, I've been involved when my son played ball here years ago. And I really, really love the idea of seeing this park developed. I um, have... The, just to answer uh, the mayor's question, the mounds in Oliver were built for a baseball um, academy that ran in Oliver for a number of years, and I believe probably Susan knows. Anyways, uh, they, they were there. Could we ever uh, obtain something like that here if we were able to um, provide a facility that would be acceptable, number one, because I think that was a huge input for Oliver at the time when it was being run. Uh, we had teams uh, training and some of the superstars uh, training some of the individuals. So I thought that would be a, um, a possibility to put in your thinking bank. Mm -hmm. I'm sure it's there already. <laughs> but the teams, uh, one of the, always the concerns I have is the longevity of um, something that we're going to develop. And um, so your enrollment in the um, sport today would be how many children at the age of, say, five, six, seven, eight, uh, how many would be involved? Uh, like, what's your membership, you know? Like, yeah. Just out of curiosity. Probably, probably 40, 55. 55? Okay. Because the majority of them would be still here 10 years from today, so our funds that would be involved in developing a park, we'd look at 
maybe a 10-year program. Yeah. And you know, when you're doing your budgeting and doing your, your forward thinking. For sure. Yeah. So and, I and guess something like that would be obtainable. Yeah, and, and, and our kids are just a t-ball now, so I'm not going anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> um, the, other, the other part is, too, is that our right now, um, last year we had a Bantam group. I'll give a quick backstory. I'm not taking up way more than my 15 minutes here. Um, <laughs> last year we, we had a Bantam group. Um, this year we, we didn't. And the reason that we did that was we had a lot of pushback from the other associations because of the facility that we were playing on. We provided exit surveys to all of our members, and that was the number one, the number one thing that, uh, that was, um, in their minds, was substandard, was that. And the feedback that we got from the coaches and the presidents of the other associations is that at the Bantam level, we cannot play on temporary pitching mounds. Um, so, so that was a big thing for us. So that sort of... We had to sort of scale that back a little bit this year, building our grassroots program, building our younger program, and our numbers are increasing at that level. So from the eight under that you speak of, mm -hmm. that group is is bigger this year than it was last year. Oh, good. Yeah. Good to hear. We certainly need something for the young folks anyways in the summer. So I'm, I'm sure there's all sorts of opportunities to utilize the facility in July and August if 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 we had one for sure yeah and that program in oliver is still being run and it's still one of their one of the flagship uses of that facility is it yeah oh the baseball academy big, still big league experience it's called really yeah. oh wow that's great to hear i have yeah. not heard of it recently but yeah. yeah that's good well we could maybe move in there somehow <laughs> thank you councillor Rhodes. one more quick question um I want you to know that I'm a big baseball fan, first of all. <laughs> um, have you talk, <clears throat> talked with or liaisoned with the Desert Park uh, Association, the Exhibition Association, uh, about the infield there? And I ask that because you know, part of you know accessing that property is going through the racetrack area and that yep. kind of thing. But have you talked to them at all? Is there any uh, information you could provide with that? Because it was one of your options on there. I know it was one of the more expensive ones, but yeah. And uh, mo all of our dialogue for that facility has been through the community services. Okay. Um, and uh, our understanding is is that when baseball starts, I think there is a very short overlap. But uh, when baseball starts, the use of the track is supposed to have been ceased um, because there have been times we've been out in the baseball field, um, these guys with horses running around, and um, that gets us concerned. We've had to sort of talk to uh, the director of community services on those sorts of things, and, and he assured us that, that those practices and those times on the track were not sanctioned. So... That there is a safety concern for sure if there's overlap like that. So thank you very much, Jason, you. for your presentation and answering all our questions. Obviously, this is a huge issue that we're going to look like, uh, look at, talk with uh, Gerald um, Davis and, um, and Jim Zackel and our CAO when he comes back. Uh, it's going to take a little bit of time for us to have a look and obviously um, get uh, some kind of a report um, after we look at all of the issues and the possibilities and, um, you know, budgeting. And But we do have a meeting, I believe, in August where we sort of do pre-budgeting and look at what are the issues that we need to deal with. Um, so uh, thank you for being so um, uh, explicit in all of the options and the, and the concerns, pro and con, that you've given us. And um, we will certainly um, get staff to look at all of this and come back with a report. And uh, fortunately, we have a little bit of time. You don't need right. this tomorrow. No, we're, no. we're good. We, we're, we're happy to help moving things forward uh, and be available to answer any questions. And, and I see that Mr. Burton is here from the adult um, uh, <laughs> a baseball thing. And no, so I, no, just, just, baseball. 
just these guys. Okay, so I'm I, I'm a little bit concerned about making sure that we have the adult baseball uh, league uh, be part of this conversation as well because Absolutely. obviously there are different needs and uh, they did come to us before with asking for more facilities. So we do have to come up with compromises. That's what we do best. <laughs> but we will certainly look at it. And Thank we you. appreciate all the time and, uh, and providing all this information to Great. us. Thank, Thank you very you. much for your time. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you, everybody, for coming. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Next um, on our on our list of uh, of uh, delegations is um, Grisella Dos Santos who would like to, would you like to come up to the microphone, please, and tell us a little bit about um, about your presentation. So before I start, um, did, did you get a letter from Gerald? That was impossible. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I'm going to get a letter Sorry, did we get a letter from? Oh, um, not no. in this part. This is the this is the committee of the whole, okay. and what you're doing is just presenting um, what yeah. you um, what you would like okay. to see. Uh, this is not a decision making meeting, and therefore we will um, deal with something later on in our regular meeting. But you had asked to come to uh, and yes. speak to us about your ideas. Thank you. Uh, so my name is Priscilla Dos Santos. Um, I'm here today to inquire about renting or leasing a room in the Sonora Center. I have been a resident of Asuas for 22 years. Uh, my husband and I are both graduates of OSS, as well as our four boys. Um, I have been a child care provider for the past 25 years, and working with children continues to be my passion. Um, I have operated Mrs. D's Play School in Kaliton for the past 19 years, and uh, recently opened up an after-school program in Kaliton as well. Um, for the past two years. And in April of this year, 2017, I opened up um, Mrs. D's Play School in the um, And I just, as my letter stated, I was operating Mrs. D's Play School in the state's elementary school. However, due to the new implementations that the ministry has enforced um, about class sizes, we have to relocate the play school. Uh, the Sonora Center would be a great location and close to the school so that we could continue to interact with the elementary school, uh, making transition into kindergarten for uh, the four-year-olds uh, uh, easier and a more, um, more um, better experience for them. They could be involved in the concerts. Um, we do Ready, Set, Learn, and, um, and certainly the interaction and socialization play a very big role. Um, in becoming independent and socially involved. Um, our programs involve um, interacting with people in our community, so it would be close as well. Uh, we like to um, make sure that the kids are introduced into our community, um, like visiting the fire hall, the RCMP, the library, the post office, etc. I have 16 children presently enrolled uh, because we took a moment earlier and then to find out that the school that we needed to relocate. Um, so I have 16 presently enrolled for September and hope to be able to accommodate eight more. So we would have a morning class and then an afternoon class. Um, I am a licensed facility and advised by Interior Health Guidelines. Um, the com community was without a play school, uh, preschool um, for seven months until I opened up Mrs. D's. The impact was felt by the families as they drove uh, their children to Oliver so that they could attend the preschool <coughs> programs there. Um, so really important is keeping families and children in our community. And um, if we cannot provide these specific services, our families will go to other communities to access this. Um, so I hope that we can work together as a community to keep Mrs. D's Play School running um, for the families and children of the city. 
Good. Well, thank you very much. Um, we hope so, too. Back in the dark ages, I was a play school teacher, and we had uh, we had the play school or the preschool in the United Church <laughs> way back. I think we used a couple of other spots around town as well. So um, uh, I think that, um, that your suggestion uh, about using this in our center is very likely a good one and what we will do is get a report from um, our director Davis on um, whether that will be uh, workable or not and how we could how we could facilitate that one of the questions I had was um, is there uh, is there a certain uh, space square footage that you need and does that depend on the number of kids that you have in there and also, do you, if you have a certain number of kids, do you require two adults in the room, or how does that work? So, uh, through licensing standards, I only take eight children on at a time. Okay. And uh, so, every child needs 3.7 <laughs> Okay. So it's not very big. Um, so, I did go and look up at the, a couple of the rooms up there, and one of the suggested rooms was the bathroom, mm -hmm. which we could... Uh, I wouldn't go past 2.30 and I know that they have crafty kids I think, yes. yeah. a week, mm -hmm. and so we could share the room and um, so I only would have um, 8 children per room and it would just Monday, Wednesday, mm -hmm. Friday would be one class that would accommodate 8 and then Tuesday, Thursday mornings would be another 8 oh, I see. and I'm hoping because I've already filled up before I could even advertise <coughs> I'm just thinking new people to the community wouldn't have that opportunity to even know that there was space there. So I'm going to try, I'm going to advertise for another, and that would be uh, my Tuesday and Thursday afternoon class from like 11.45 till 2.15. So it's just you, or do you require so another I adult? Have, um, mm. I run my program in Cleveland, and so I have Cheryl Holtz, who mm -hmm. is also an MCA's resident. She runs the program for me. And, mm. um, so we only need one person per age. Okay. Yeah, so I would never exceed eight. Good. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Uh, Director Davis has a report on your regular agenda. Yes. Well. We know, yeah, that was that's correct. Anybody else have any other questions? Oh, and I'm that I guess the other thing I was thinking about was the child care center. Do they um, offer a similar type of program and just they may be full or it's just two options or just I was uh, uh, employed there okay. at one point doing the administrative work. Um, and I do know by licensing, now don't quote yeah. me, but I do know by our licensing, you cannot have uh, a play school program and a daycare combined. Oh. They have something that's called play share. So it's not a preschool. Um, but by licensing standards, you're not allowed to operate the two combined. You oh. have to have either a play school program or a daycare. You can't combine them. That's interesting. I didn't yes, know that. Because daycare okay. is, is, is classified as running all day, where preschool, we only run two and a half hours per day okay. for play school. Well, thank you. We will, anybody else have any? We will have a report from uh, Director Davis this afternoon. So thank you very much for coming and outlining your, um, your program for us. We appreciate thank that. You. Thank you. Um, anything else? Uh, then I would uh, suggest that we need a motion to adjourn the meeting. Thank you, Councillor Campbell, Councillor King. All in favor. Thank you very much.